can hear me as a teacher. I've been teaching 30 years uh, with all levels that you can imagine, since the little ones in preschool up to uh, grown-ups or young learners and young learners as well. And I know that one of the things that I've seen in my experience of teaching is that students feel, sometimes they feel frustrated with, because they don't get the language. Not because it's hard to do that, but they, they have to deal with uh, a foreign language that they don't know, they don't practice at home, and it's hard for them. So we, I'm going to give you and share with you some ideas and strategies in order to make them learn in an easier way, okay? And probably you are not uh, traditional teachers anymore because nowadays with the situation that we are facing right now with the coronavirus and, and everything that's happening around us, uh, we have experimented a lot of situations that are not common. They are really uncommon. Uh, like faced with the, with the technology or trying to use these platforms and dashboards in order to support our teaching in the best way with our students, okay? So it's important you to manage this kind of tools in order to help them to learn using this uh, technological tools. And inquiry-based learning, which is the topic that we are going to talk about today, uh, helps you and gives you enough support to make students learn in an easier way, okay? So we're going to start sharing my screen. So you're going to see my screen right now. But yeah. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the PowerPoint presentation, okay? So uh, if it is clear, I just want to start with, sorry, okay, let me see if I can put this, which is good. Okay, as you see, this is my presentation personal card. You, you, you can contact me, this is my email, and this is my WhatsApp from Ecuador. Uh, sorry for this zero, it doesn't apply in outside, it, it's, it's okay, okay? So here's my email as well. Okay, and now we're going to start with this um, really important poll. I want you to read these 10 reasons to use inquiry-based learning, which is the one that applies most uh, for you, or mostly for you, okay? Take your time to read them, please. If you want to write them down in a sheet of paper apart, you can do it, okay? So just I just want you to be sure about what you decided because this is what you're going to discover or to learn today, hopefully. Okay, if you are ready, if you already chose your best option, I would like you to complete the poll. Okay, so this is the poll that you are going to uh, choose from. Okay, so you have the 10 reasons there. Just click on the circle that you uh, chose. We, we still, we, we don't see the poll quite yet. Do you want me to launch it? Please, if, it is, uh, if you can do it, please. There okay. you go. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, yes. now, guys, so you choose your answer from there, please. Remember, there are 10 answers, so you need to scroll down a little bit if you chose numbers 9 or 10. Wow, I see okay. answers coming in. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Answers are coming in. Very, very nice. We're going to give you a, a minute to choose your answer. Okay, you can see the percentages over there. Yeah. 
Ah, okay. Motivation. I think motivation is really important and you want to make them feel motivated to learn, which is good. Okay, one more minute and I'll stop the poll. Mm -hmm. Good, I still see answers okay. coming in. Nice. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm gonna move a little bit this far. Okay. Okay, teachers, I'm gonna stop the poll right now and let's see the results. Okay, there we go. Okay, the orange line. Uh, says that motivation, increasing motivation and engagement is the most important thing. I mean, one of the best reasons to uh, help students apply the inquiry-based learning, okay? I think that empowers students' voice and honor students' choice probably is not uh, so important, okay? Let's share results in that. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, because here you're going to see and feel uh, the way to motivate the students uh, perfectly. I mean, to, to uh, do this engagement with the students, with the students and their, and their learning. Okay, so this is the color that we're going to go. Now, look at this uh, slide. You can see inquiry as the main word in the middle of this uh, brainstorming. You can tell me. Uh, you can say which is the word that best fit uh, to your need in teaching. Okay, so it must be authentic, of course, because they need to experience. They have to relate these experiences with the real, uh, with the real experiences. That you now to the real experiences, and you need to promote or foster lifelong learners. Okay, uh, it has a it's purposeful. You need to investigate, you need to research. So investigation is very important as well. Reflecting because you need to uh, start using students' uh, critical thinking, which is a high order thinking skill. Good. So today we're going to talk about all of this uh, words around the main point or focus and inquiry that we are gonna talk about the other tracks. Okay. And now I want you to watch this video, which is, uh, not short at all, it just it lasts four minutes, but this is like a brief summary or induction of what uh, inquiry-based learning is. No, 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 no.
Lucy, dile que baje el volumen. Okay, sorry, there is something wrong here. Let me see. Let but me still, see. Lore, they can read the information on the video. People are a lot more worried about listening than reading the information. Okay, so you want me to go ahead to keep uh, going? Because I'm not sure everyone's reading what's on the video. They're more worried about listening than reading the information. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, you might it's the audio one. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. Now, uh, this is the, these are the two questions that concern to our job. It's important learning to read or, or reading to learn. Which of these two statements are the ones that applies to your teaching? Of course, both. Learning to read, because you start the teaching how to read since the very beginning. I mean, for the little ones, for the uh, slower or, sorry, lower uh, levels. You teach them how to read, how to start the process of reading and writing since the early stages. But what happened with reading to learn? This is more, more than what we expect for. I mean, when they read to learn, they can know how to read for any other problem and give it the solution of that because they already comprehend, they already understand how to read anything that they would like to or they have to. Okay? So this is both are important, but remember the stages. You start with literature to read since the early stages, but then you go to reading to learn, how to read in order to learn. Okay, why is so important as you heard in the video? It promotes a lifelong learning because how can it develops the lifelong learning? By showing curiosity because the students love when they are uh, when they wake up there or awake their feelings of curiosity, they are like this, worst these days, when they uh, need to learn by themselves and they, they used to uh, just watch the news or check by websites or uh, search in different uh, dashboards, things that they are interested in. Okay, uh, by seeking and valuing diver diversity, yes, that's for sure, because they need to value this especially nowadays, okay? By persisting and seeking out new solutions because we need to develop our students' skills in problem solving. So we need to develop, uh, we need to help them and support their uh, problem solution skills. By using your unique talents, because all of them have their unique talents, their own intelligence, uh, their own uh, ways or style of learning, and we need to take advantage of them. Okay, so we can promote a positive change in them. And by learning and applying technology tools to solve problems, this is very important. And this is one point that it's really, uh, that really concerns to us right now. Okay, actually we need to find uh, the different tools in order to learn uh, in this way, by using technological tools. Okay, and look at this cycle. These are the five A's 
uh, you can see that you can use them in order to make students learn with this cycle. Engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Okay, so these are the five A's. This is a circle, but of course, you can use that any, in any, at any order that you want to do it, depending on your students. But of course, in the end, or at the end, this is your choice. Okay, so engage is like how to motivate them with a challenging situation. That's important to set up a challenging situation so they can feel motivated and engaged with. Exploring because the students investigate the phenomenon or that they need to solve the question that the teacher already started and they need to, uh, to find out the ways to uh, look for the solution or to look for the answer at least. Explain, students explain the phenomenon. So they, they, as they already know, or they already explored about, about the topic, then they have to explain how they did it, uh, how come, or, or, or where did they get the, the, the info from, things like that. Sorry. Okay. I heard some, some noise outside. I don't know, okay. Students explain the phenomenon, new knowledge is gained and applied. So as you saw in a video, they acquire the knowledge because they already investigated first about it. Elaborate, so they do. When they do, they are learning, 100%, okay? They, do, they, they are now doing with their hands-on activities what they have uh, investigated about and explained it about. Evaluate, you can apply here their self-evaluation and peer evaluation, okay? Students reflect on their knowledge and the learning process assessments, okay? So uh, you can find rubrics for them in order to uh, assess, uh, the, the assessment can be done by themselves, okay? And this is the circle. You can follow it as any way or as any order you like to, you, you want to, okay? Here you can see this picture where in the middle you can see the big question mark because you always start this inquiry-based learning by using a challenging question, okay? Uh, later, we will see about these challenging questions and what are they, are they about, okay? So the challenging question promotes lifelong learning. It means that not just for today learning. They can apply it forever. I mean, they can use it in their own lives forever, okay? That's a lifelong learning. Connection to real lives because uh, students, sorry, sorry. Students need to know that they uh, that they need to connect their own experiences with the knowledge, with the learning. Otherwise, they are going to feel that they learn but separately, not in the same uh, mood or the same way. The idea is to connect both new knowledge and their real experience lives. Okay, creativity because they need to create to design. Uh, you are going to see that with this uh, approach, the students feel more motivated to create things and design things and find out solutions for problems. Critical thinking or reflection, because they need to think about what they are learning, uh, what they are learning, and they need to think about which is the which are the main concerns about this new learning. Okay, and what you try to develop with these all questions or these all uh, skills that it's high, it's to promote high order thinking skills, which are they, okay? Not, not just identifying or recognizing or just point out and say like the, the traditional way to assess the students. High order thinking skills are the ones that develop uh, high thinking, like for example, reasoning, argumenting, discussing, uh, I don't know, debating, those are high order thinking skills and they promote a real life no learning. And with all of this, we promote proactive learners, not just the passive ones, the ones that receive the info or the input, but they don't do the expansion, they don't do the uh, output of the learning. Okay, any question until here? Okay, probably this is your next question. What makes a big question big? Because there are different types of questions. I've seen uh, uh, the other webinars 
and I saw one specifically that uh, calls my attention, that called my attention that moment. And it was that big questions are not the ones that are long questions, but that are the ones that have the WH uh, start beginning uh, statement. Okay, so W questions like what, how, how come, why. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. I took this picture from our series stopwatch because uh, this is the, the methodology that it works with. It's inquiry based learning. Okay, so look at these two examples of questions. The first one says, What is an insect? And the other says, What would happen to Earth if insects disappeared? So, probably this is going to be a very short answer. I mean, what is an insect? It's a little animal or a small animal that flies or has two wings and, I don't know, live in the grass or or something like that. But what would happen to where if insects disappeared? It demands a lot of thinking because probably you will have a lot of answers about this, all of them worthly, uh, they, they work, but it's important you to tell them that they have to develop their critical thinking and write down on the board any answer that comes up to their minds, okay? So you will see that the answers are going, probably in the first question, you will find two or three answers and most of them are the same. But what happened in the second? You're going to develop other answers and you have a lot of answers in the second. Okay, here I have some examples about big uh, questions. How do airplanes fly? Depending on the uh, age that you are, which is the target that you're working with, you will see here that it applies or not for this type of questions to your age students, okay? So how do airplanes fly? What do butterflies migrate? Why did George Washington become the first president of the United States? So probably they are going to say answers of things that they have heard or to, from parents, for example, or from their other teachers in Spanish, or their own uh, research. Okay, things like that are going to happen in the classroom, but you are now brainstorming their critical thinking. Okay, and here we have the big inquiry question. Okay, the same question mark here, and here you can see some concepts, or which is the way, as you saw in the video, how you start the cycle of uh, teaching them with inquiry based learning. First of all, the key concepts. So you have to be clear that concepts, topics, themes are going to be included in inquiry based learning. So it's inside, uh, of course, it's inside of them. Transferring knowledge to new situations. Okay, just okay. It's not just putting the information inside students' brain, it's to make them develop these situations, applying to their own lives if it's possible. Okay, authentic experiences, something like that, but in a very, uh, in a higher level. Cooperative learning, that's very important because this is the way we learn nowadays, by sharing our findings, by, by uh, giving opinions, by having, I don't know, uh, other comments, other points of views. So this is cooperative learning or um, collaborative learning which is that sharing with partners, okay? That's mandatory in inquiry-based learning. Then you can develop the cross-disciplinary integration because with the same question, you are not going to teach them just language, English per se. No, you are going to teach other disciplines or other subjects. For example, with a question about the insect, you can develop a language, of course, because they are going to talk about probably adjectives, pronouns, nouns, but what about the other subjects? Probably science is gonna be included there. Social studies, if you want to talk about specific insects that, for example, live in the plains or live in the jungle, I don't know, okay? But this is the idea to integrate the language as well. And working with these five uh, statements, you can go ahead with inquiry based learning. Okay. And now we are going to see which is the difference between traditional classroom and inquiry classroom. As you can see, the traditional classroom, teacher gives the inform, gives all the information. She's the one that knows everything. 
Here we call them the non plus ultra in Latin, in Latin, it's a Latin phrase. But that's true, teachers know everything and they are going to transmit the information to the students. But in an inquiry classroom, teachers facilitate, sorry, teachers facilitate and guide the students to understand how to get and make sense of the mass of data. So you facilitate, you guide as teachers. You are not the one that knows everything and you transmit to the students. Okay, that's not the idea. You can uh, monitor their, you can monitor their, their knowledge, but that's it. They have to construct their own knowledge, okay, later on. Students' goals are to master content, memorizing facts and information. Yes, they memorize the information and uh, at the end of the process, they have to give a test or do a test to uh, in order to uh, approve or do a good job uh, about the, the, the level or, or the knowledge that they know. But it doesn't guarantee that uh, students are going to learn a lot or, or are going to learn at all. Okay, so in, in prior based learning, students' goals are to use and learn content, but as means to develop information processing, okay, and problem solving. They need to uh, present a uh, a solution for a problem so in that moment their goals are different not just memorizing what the teacher taught them or told them okay in here lessons are organized for whole class approach i mean traditional method uh says that uh, you have to teach them with the same lesson but you are not taking into account so you are not taking into account that the students are uh, different and they have different learning styles as i told you since the very beginning of the session okay they learn different ways so lessons must be uh, different okay and here you can apply inclusive education you can apply mixed ability classes because lessons are different many lessons focus on small group instructions okay in inquiry based uh, learning that's the way it works mini lessons or mini lectures Okay, you can call however you want. Uh, the information is limited to what is available in the classroom in the school. Okay, okay, we have the resources of, from school. You have the materials from school, you have the text from school, but, but you need to, uh, to find out a lot of resources. I remember one student, uh, Lance, that he told me, teacher, we need, to, uh, we need to look for the Discovery Channel website. And I told him, how come? What what it for? What does it gonna be useful for? Useful. And he told me, teacher, because there we can learn a lot about what you are teaching us now. And it was about endangered species. Okay, I remember this. This is an anecdote that we can remember. That they, they, because they they have the access to this type of uh, resources, so the teacher needs to be very updated uh, in order to teach in, uh, in the best way. Okay, technology focus is on learning about computers rather than its application. So you can see, you may, maybe they manage uh, they manage computer gadgets and everything, but they don't know how to use the information uh, for as an advantage of their learning. Technology is used to connect the students with local and rural communities, and that's for sure. They already they they have done this already without your uh, your guide. So you know that anyway. Assessment focuses on the importance of one right answer on a test. Okay, typical assessment in the end of, at the end of the session where students have to answer yes or no, true or false, and that's it. But they don't think about the learning, about their knowledge, the knowledge. Assessment includes a variety of strategies to identify students' ability to utilize thinking skills and mastery of content. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the idea of assessment, and it's not done. It's not going to be done just by the teacher, but the students, they have to do it by themselves, okay, by themselves. And here we have to chart the benefits for students' learning. Mm -hmm. Leads to deeper understanding rather than passively receiving knowledge, as we already talked about. It's not just to receive the input, it's to do the output. Allows the students to become active learners, proactive learners. Okay, proactivity is one of the skills that you are going to see in your class immediately as soon as you apply the inquiry-based learning. Introduces different perspectives and conflicting ideas 
that will change, challenge thinking, okay? Because the students are going to brainstorm their critical thinking and they are going to uh, gain more uh, self-learning with this. Allows for knowledge and skills to be applied, which are the skills that we need to apply with this, the higher order thinking was. Encourages the students to take ownership for their learning. When they take ownership for their learning, it means that they can apply it in their real lives. So they can use it. It's not like to learn, make them learn uh, the, the, the square root in mathematics. Probably they, they won't use it anymore, maybe in that moment of the class, but later on, they are not gonna use that. It's so totally useless. But if they use this, uh, the knowledge in their lives, when they travel, when they, uh, communicate with others or they can I don't know example they can for instance they can give a speech because they have learned this they have uh, make it a deeper learning okay they have made a deeper learning now these are the levels of inquiry probably uh, as we are uh, we already checked the, the, the circle and cycle of, of inquiry now these are the levels as you can see in the middle, we have the guided. Who is the guide here? Of course, the teacher. Of course, the teacher, the monitor, the facilitator. And then we have the others, which is control, model, and finally we get a free way of learning. Okay, we will see a little bit more about this in the next slide. These are the levels of inquiry. Control, guided, modeled, and free, finally free. Okay, control inquiry, the teacher chooses the topic and identifies materials. Okay, so as you can see, teacher is the one that facilitates the tools to learn, but not just the physical ones, but the tools of uh, topic, the content, the ideas, probably teacher is going to give them ideas or some suggestions about how to start the inquiry. Okay, the inquiry. Now, guide it. In a guided inquiry, students have more flexibility. Now, students decide how to work and what to work with, okay? More flexibility. Uh, they choose their resources and activities, however, they are expected to create, okay? Model, in a model inquiry, students act as an apprentice, classroom teacher. So you're going to have in your classes uh, small teachers or little teachers teaching to the others, which is good, they love it. They feel so motivated to teach to the others or to present their results in front of the others. Okay? They love it. They feel so motivated. And of course, when they when they feel motivated, uh, motivated to, to acquire knowledge, uh, they are learning actually, they are learning in the best way. They are trying to uh, foster themselves to learn more. And then we have the free. In a free inquiry, students work independently. One of the things that we, uh, our main concern in our students nowadays is to promote autonomous learn learning and, 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 and to promote autonomous learners because they need to be uh, independent. They don't, they don't need to wait until they, they read something or they find out something from the teacher. They can uh, work independently and think independently. They explore meaningful questions examine multiple perspectives, draw conclusions, and choose their own approach for presenting their learning. And finally, in the free stage, they can use any tool that they want to um, or suggest. Okay. I took this, uh, this page from our series Compass. I don't know if uh, any of you are using it already, but it's the perfect way to activate thinking. Okay, with a big question. So you can see the big question, what events change the world? Okay, so with this big question around it, students are going to activate their thinking. So teacher can write down their questions and look at this in Compass, we have that support or the aid of uh, a big picture. I mean, a big colorful picture. So based on that, students start uh, brainstorming ideas and activating their thinking, okay? And reflecting about that, uh, giving opinions about that. And remember, in inquiry-based learning, there are no wrong or good answers, okay?
okay? So let the students uh, tell you the, their ideas and say their thinking, okay? Let them speak out. Okay. And here we have something that is typical, or it's really uh, common in our in our duty of teaching, <laughs> doing projects and project-based learning are two different things. And here you will see why they are really different, okay? Doing projects, as you can see, teacher has knowledge. Okay, we know the, we, we, we have the knowledge in our hands and now we are going to deliver it. We are going to transmit it. Teacher gives directions to students and they have to follow them. That's the way it works. And then students learn facts by following those directions. And then they have to present us uh, at the end of the unit, they have to present a test or a project, a project that can be done based on what they have learned before. Okay, sorry, my, my, my computer is touch and that's why sometimes I skip the, the slides. Okay, uh, then we have teacher, uh, Project-based learning. The teacher asks a question. As I, as I told you before, we always start with a question. Teacher asks a question, and then the students uh, devise their own directions. Okay, with this information, they can devise it. They can uh, they can use it in the best way. Students test and revise their own directions. They check that out. If they are uh, they are fine, if they really fit with that what what the teacher has announced uh, or has taught before or has guide before, then they can devise these direct directions. They can uh, guide these directions by themselves. Then the students learn information and develop skills. In here, students develop their social skills as well with cooperative learning or collaborative learning. So they are going to share. Uh, findings, they are going to talk about what they have found or, or to analyze, to listen to other opinions. Remember that in co collaborative learning, students develop their values, their, uh, I don't know, their moral and ethic uh, behaviors. Okay, students apply their knowledge skills to solve a real world problem. Now, here comes uh, the moment where they switch they're thinking in order to solve a problem, a real problem. So that's why, and then they are going to be able to ask the question. Okay, the question that starts here. Okay, here we have different types of uh, resources, ICT. This concerns a lot for us right now, especially. Actually, if we are not in ICT skills, we are out, totally out. So that's why we have this, uh, I wrote here some tips, research info among students, classify it, comparing, classifying, remember our high order thinking skills as well. Compare info so they can see if they have uh, differences and similarities with their partner's infos. Then share them, present them, and looking for other choices or alternatives, okay? Because there's no just one right answer. They can find their own alternatives uh, to the same question, to the same problem, okay? And by using, of course, the investigation, the uh, research. Okay, another idea are the graphic organizers. I have found that they are really useful in our class. Sometimes the students, for example, myself, I love to visualize things. The, of course, this is my, my, my own opinion, but that's my type of learning by visualizing objects, things. I love colorful pictures. I love to see uh, concrete objects. And students like to uh, check the information by using, most of them like to check their information, to learn information by seeing, by watching this kind of resources or tools. Here we have, uh, and to synthesize and summarize the info, they are really useful for. They are, they, they, you can use it, the prediction chart, cause and effect, problem solution, the Venn diagram, in order to make them compare and classify, to brainstorm ideas, you can start with a, the umbrella chart, where 
students can find their uh, can write down their own ideas about the question here there are different answers for example here we have like a mini uh, main events events quilt just for uh recording events okay if you want a prediction chart uh, before reading and after reading, if they a uh, problem and solution, cause and effect, all of them are really useful. There are a lot of them, especially in history. People use these uh, timelines charts and they love it. And students love it because they can visualize time periods and they can uh, assume and, and verify some historical contents that are hard to deal with, okay? And then collaborative work, as I told you before, it's important because we can develop these types, these tips uh, or these strategies inside the classroom. Sharing ideas. This is very important to listen to the others. And that's what how, how the, the real life is. When you go, uh, when you start working in a formal job, you need to share with your colleagues. When you uh, when you when you decide to decide to marry with someone, you need to share with your wife or, or husband, and you need to share your ideas and present your points of view. Of course, values. What type of values are you going to develop in here? Generosity, for example. Uh, 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 solidarity, uh, being ki uh, kindness, which are politeness. Uh, those are uh, types of values that we can develop among our students. Self and peer evaluation, teamwork, leadership. Then you can see which are the, the ones that are the small teachers teaching to the others, to teaching to their partners. Inclusive education, that's mandatory, especially here in Ecuador. We have this policy, which is uh, the, the, the inclusion to our students that are uh, that have a type of disability or or, or a, they are slower learners, okay? And of course, slower and faster learners. You can help them uh, to be uh, useful inside the classroom, and they can be they can feel confident to uh, to go on with the learning. Okay, ludic tools. This is very important. Because I've seen in my experience in teaching that students get frustrated when they don't learn something. And I just, when I decided to apply in part-based learning, I made them, I made it to play and they love it. Okay, what type of games? I remember one that I, I just uh, make it, I made it in that moment uh, to learn, to make them learn um, irregular verbs for example this is something hard in our in our in the language you know because uh, especially the irregular ones uh, they are different and i invent something with a ball and it was really helpful for them in that moment i would tell you maybe in another workshop about it but it worked it worked and and now nowadays i'm using it as still okay tpr total physical response because there are some kinesthetic students that love to express using their uh, body language. Brain gym, you know, those are type of uh, emotional intelligences that mm -hmm. students need to develop, okay? Need to develop that mandatorily. That's uh, uh, neuro-linguistic skills. Contests, because they love, they are very competitive and they love to, they love contests. Dictionary, because they, they have played this before, probably at home, so you can make them useful inside your classroom. Trace, that's a steel body language. Field trips, because they see the things in situ. I mean, they can, uh, they can observe and they can uh, check by their own, by, by themselves, the, the things that you're explaining them, they can make it lively. Then we have uh, puzzles, crosswords, and show and tell. These are uh, some uh, activities that they love it, that they, they love to do that. Of course, the teacher must be very prepared, well prepared in order to help them to learn using these activities, okay? So you have to plan your classes in advance. It's not something that you can improvise. Uh, you have to uh, work on them and be very well prepared. Yes. Okay, these are some references that I have. Uh, I really recommend a Utopia page 
where you can learn a lot about this and choir based learning and project based learning and some websites that you can get in also the video if you want to uh, to watch it completely you can just go to youtube it's there and nothing is invented now it's already done i'm not an expert in that but i love i, I have worked with this and i just want uh, wanted to share this experience with you all okay and this is my name again so just in case you want to uh check this uh personality okay i'm here now should we say that they can now open their microphones to ask? I will, uh -huh. uh, if, it's, if it is fine for you all, because some, uh, if they talk one by one, maybe we can go ahead. It, I don't know if they are able to to talk one by one. I don't know. There are how many of them are there here? We've got 250. 255. Okay, yeah. I don't know if it's better to uh, answer questions. Okay, do you, can you see me on screen? Yes, yes, we can. And okay. I can see many okay. other teachers. <laughs> uh, thanks for our information. Yes, very interesting. Thanks. You very much for sharing this info. We are many in the webinar now. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to share with you this. Thanks for this info. Thank you very much. Okay, no questions about anything. Uh, congratulations, Lore. Thanks for the info. Are we going to receive an attendance? Yes, you will receive an, att an attendance uh, certificate from Richmond. Don't worry. Thanks, you all. No questions. Thanks, Miss. Keep doing the great job. Thank you. Really interesting. Thank you. It was clear. I hope you use it and try it out because it's really nice. It's a perfect way to teach. Thank you. It's very interesting. Thank you all. Someone has a question. Anna, Anna Maria, I think, has a question. Yeah, sure. Hola, buenos días. Thank you. I cannot hear. Thank you so much for your information. Okay, for more information about inquiry based learning, I cannot hear. Maybe if you could type your questions in the chat room. I, I think it's better. Yeah. It's better. Thank you all. Okay, my pleasure. We okay, we will. Thank you. I, I think that's are. interesting. If there are no questions for Lorena, I am going to have to let you guys go because uh, we need the virtual classroom. As you can imagine, we're very, very busy with things. So if you have no questions for Lorena, I want to thank you all for finding the time to join us today. Thank you, Lore, for a very interesting session. And uh, oh, my pleasure. And I hope we can meet sometime soon again for some more learning and teacher training. Thank you, everyone. Have a very, very nice day. Thank you. Oh, thank you all. Thank you for being here, for taking your time to listen to this webinar. Uh, it's my pleasure. I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Do I have to leave right now or I have to wait until I'll late? close the session for everyone? Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Lore. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. bye. You're very welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye.